Item number SCP-6000 Security Level 1 Containment Class Keter Disruption Class Amida Risk Class Critical Special Containment Procedures Joint Task Force Omega-100 Last Stand has been established in cooperation with the following organizations The Global Occult Coalition Pentagram The People's Liberation Army Paranormal Force GRU Division P until containment is established or the foundation falls, MTF New 7 Hammerdown has been folded into JTF Omega 100 and placed under the direct oversight of 056. Foundation facilities in active areas are being evacuated and replaced with contingents of JTF Omega 100 in accordance with Deployment Plan 6000. Description SCP 6000 is a Daylight Empire. As described in SCP-140, expected to fully materialize within consensus reality on March 20th, 2022. SCP-140 has fully breached containment and will result in Incident 140CK, causing SCP-6000 to manifest. The Overseer Council has preemptively declared the event a BK-class broken masquerade scenario due to the extensive use of Hostile and reality altering anomalies by SCP 6000, even into the modern day. Addendum 6001 Threat Assessment A joint working group between the Department of Analytics and the Department of Applied Force produced a report outlining the primary dangers associated with a modern day day fight empire. It was based on information from SCP 140. Archaeological finds, study of Daedric inscriptions and documents, and parastatistical data models. Description, Threat, Notes Ground Force, High Estimated active personnel of 2.4 million Full access to modern equipment via pictures from foreign suppliers Air Force, Medium Comparatively small, but modern Air Force Existence of stealth technology contested, though anomalous modification of aircraft is possible. Navy, low. The control area is largely landlocked. Outside alliances, high. SCP-6000 will likely have extensive control or influence over nearby countries, far beyond its boundaries. Operations are underway to preserve geopolitical structure and prevent immediate Cascade into an SK class dominance shift scenario. Infrastructure High. Military organs should have no difficulty transferring troops and equipment even in the event of the multi front war. Espionage Unknown. Existence of a national spy agency likely. Further details about capabilities are unknown. Humanoid modification Medium. Able to cause significant changes to individuals for specific purposes. Tactical possibilities unknown. Apex tier pluripotent entity collusion. High. Destructive ability believed to be enhanced through packs with the Scarlet King. Biological weaponry. High. Historical records show highly deferred anomalous transfiguration abilities. Possibility of plant or fungus based contingent likely. Nuclear weaponry. Severe. Day fight control of nuclear weapons and ICBMs for delivery is a certainty. Addendum 6002 Inciting Incident. The existence of SCP 6000 is a consequence of a terminal containment fleet featuring SCP 140. The original anomalous print run of a chronicle of the Devas published by SCP-140-A consisted of 75 copies. Of these, 49 were destroyed by SCP-140's anomalous capabilities. Foundation agents were able to locate 20 copies and safely destroy them, leaving 6 copies remaining. SCP-140 and 5 additional copies outside of containment collected redesignated SCP-140-B. One of these uncontained instances was in the personal collection of Richard Bruce, 11th Earl of Elgin, 
a known martial cardinal and dark associate. Although Bruce observed the proper protocols for handling his copy of SCP-140B and did not allow any liquids nearby, general security on his property was lax. As a result, a group of lightly armed anomalous individuals were able to break into his estate and steal it. Following the theft, Bruce immediately contacted Marshal Carter and Doc to report the incident. Given the danger inherent in SCP-140, MCND contacted the Foundation through a liaison, agreeing to allow the Foundation to contain it upon recovery. Mobile Task Force Mu-3 Highest Bidders was deployed to find the SCP-140-B instance. It was quickly determined that it had been stolen by a set of the children of the Scarlet King, intending to use the SCP-140-B instance to resurrect the Dayfight Empire, where the Scarlet King was worshipped permanently. MTF Mu-3 tracked the cult to a house in Elgin Mori, Scotland, and attempted to intervene. However, they were too late and arrived to find that the ritual had been completed. Meanwhile, surveillance footage showed that, shortly before their arrival, SCP-140 spontaneously combusted our containment. Note, the Global Occult Coalition, Horizon Initiative, and Serpent's Hand, each of which owned a copy of the Chronicles of the Davis, confirmed that their own copies combusted at the same time as SCP-140. The location of the fifth SCP-140-B instance is unknown. It is assumed to have combusted as well. As best as can be determined by Foundation investigators, the ritual involved the ignition of SCP-140-B to bring forth the one true empire of this hoary and tired parchment. Thaumaturgic sympathy bonds caused the simultaneous destruction of other copies of the Chronicles of the Davis. Following the ritual's completion, all known Davis artifacts began emitting Omicron pan Hume radiation. The ritual was performed on the winter solstice, defined in a ritual as symbolically equivalent to midnight, but is not expected to take full effect until the vernal equinox. Likewise defined as symbolic of dawn, when the Davite Empire will manifest in consensus reality at once, defined as awakening following a deep sleep of fugue. Addendum 6003 Foundation Briefing The following bulletin was sent to all Foundation personnel to brief them on the impending manifestation of SCP-140 in baseline reality. From 051 To all staff Subject Impending CK Class Scenario They Fight Empire Date 28th of December 2021 To all members of the Foundation In three months time there will be a CK class scenario of unprecedented magnitude. On March 20th, 2022, the Dayfight Empire will manifest in present consensus reality. Current estimates suggest that its territorial extent will stretch from central Siberia and will place most of modern Kazakhstan. For the benefit of present now unfamiliar with the Dayfight Empire or SCP-140, a brief summary follows. The Dayfight Empire would be one of the most hostile and anomalous nations to have ever existed. Several novel thaumaturgic practices were developed in this area, including hemomancy, herbomancy, and necromancy. The state religion enforces worship of the Scarlet King, a violent divine figure. An extended version of this group, known as the Children of the Scarlet King, has attempted to cause world-ending events on several occasions by summoning the deity. Their anomalous warfare capabilities will have been greatly enhanced through access to modern technology and weaponry. The danger or nature of such enhancements are unknown, but are believed to be extensive. All existing exploratory research projects are suspended. All non-essential containment work is suspended. Sites have been assigned specific tasks to protect as much of humanity as is possible. Expect a bulletin detailing your new priorities. On March 19th, all essential personnel will be moved to reality-anchored sites to provide immunity to the CK class scenario. Class A or designated personnel will be relocated to extra-dimensional sites. We are currently working on installing additional Zanx Anaskoskos 
constant tempo sinks to resist retroactive disruption to the Foundation's existence. We will survive the reappearance of the Deified Empire, regardless of what happens on March 20th. Normalcy will be protected. The consensus will be maintained from the desk of O51. Secure. Contain. Protect. Alert. Breach has begun. Item number SCP-6000 Containment Class Neutralized Security Level 1 Special Containment Procedures Outside of archival documentation, SCP-6000-A should be referred to by its legal name rather than as an SCP object. It is not considered anomalous. Information regarding SCP-6000 is classified Level 1 and available for research. Description SCP-6000 was a CK-class scenario which resulted in the re-manifestation of SCP-6000-A, a UN organized state officially known as the Republic of Devastan. Predecessor nations include the Deified Empire, various tribal sects and its membership within the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, all of which were forcibly suppressed from consensus reality until SCP-6000 occurred on March 20th, 2022. SCP-6000 occurred due to the destruction of SCP-140, a text which purported to describe the historical deified empire. It is now known that SCP-140 was highly inaccurate. Further, it was discovered that the former prevailing theory as to the operation of SCP-140 that it was restoring an ontologically annihilated civilization into being was only partially correct. It was also the phenomena that had initially ontologically annihilated deified history. The complete destruction of all copies of SCP-140 undid its effects and ontologically reinstated SCP-6000-A to its original form. Most Foundation installations and personnel were reality anchored in preparation for this event, and thus were unaffected. As a result, the internal consensus of the Foundation is now at odds with greater consensus reality. Discrepancies between reality have yet to be fully reconciled. The Foundation is currently working towards briefing personnel on the inaccuracies described in SCP-140. Addendum 6001 Historical Comparisons The following table outlines inaccuracies described in SCP-140 and the truth is present in the legitimate Devastan. SCP-140 Previous Reality SCP-6000 Consensus Reality the history of the day fight is remarkably consistent, displaying little evolution over time. Completely unsupported, day fight culture has transformed significantly as technology and social conditions changed. This lack of evolution is believed to correspond to a lack of imagination on the part of SCP 140A. A day fight empire contained an imperial cult to the Scarlet King, which survived to modern day as the children of the Scarlet King. This cult focused on violent masculinity as embodied in the Scarlet King. The Scarlet King never existed. The myth of the Scarlet King was invented by SCP-148 to downplay the leadership of the Uptong and Saw, the seven matriarchal rulers who led the Grand Canaanite of the Deva. Modern scholarship translates Uptong and Saw as seven mothers. A less accurate translation would be as the seven brides. SCP 140A misinterpreted this name either intentionally or accidentally, and subverted the day fight patriarchy in favor of the more familiar Western patriarchy. The day fight empire had one of the largest slave populations of any civilization in history, with approximately 75% of the total population being enslaved. True, however, shortly following this peak, a slave revolution destroyed the Deified Empire. All successor states have defined themselves as heirs to this revolution and abolish slavery in all forms, save for the short-lived Kofar sects, 
which collapsed following a military coup. The day fights were led by a long-lived and anomalous human subspecies known as the Deva, which practiced extensive cannibalism. The Deva were based on humans who styled themselves as divine and were known to practice cannibalism. However, the Deva ruling class was obliterated during the slave revolution that destroyed the Deifite Empire. Later Deifite nations used the title of Deva for various leadership positions, but these later Deva were had little relation to the original ruling class and do not style themselves as divine. SCP-076 is a humanoid anomaly within Foundation containment, an immortal warrior only capable of thinking about violence and farming. SCP-073 is another immortal humanoid, also in containment, believed to be the brother of SCP-076. The names are believed to be Elp Lachelle and Sharon, respectively, and they are suspected to be related to Aborn King from Genesis. Up Lachelle and Sharon are they fight cultural heroes with no relation to any Abrahamic faith. Together, they led the slave rebellion against the Deifite Empire. Neither was anomalous. The Deifites practice an anomalous form of heteroculture, capable of creating sapient and highly anomalous plant matter with various effects. Various anomalies contained under the designations SCP-3140, SCP-392, and SCP-3399. They fight hydric culture is highly advanced, but not anomalous. Techniques used in the nation have formed the basis for general hydric culture around the world. Addendum 6002 Profile of SCP-140A In the months following SCP-6000, Multiple Foundation investigations were launched to explain the massive discrepancy between the observed Devastani nation and the country described in SCP-140. One such inquiry was into SCP-140A, the author of SCP-140, who Foundation historians suspected of having authorial bias. An investigation team determined that SCP-140-A was Thomas Bruce, 6th Earl of Elgin, an ancestor of Richard Bruce. It was originally believed that Thomas Bruce had sponsored Up Lachelle Coex in publishing a work which described a Deifite Empire. Analyzing records present within Davistan, it has been determined that Up Lachelle Coex never actually existed and was merely Bruce's pen name. In 1786, Thomas Bruce visited the Grand Canite of the Deva. At the time, the country was significantly reduced from the height of its former power, the historical Deifite Empire, and existed as squabbling regional powers. Bruce was fascinated by the past of the country to the point of completely ignoring its present state. He wrote the Chronicles of the Deva, which ignored most of the country's history and blended its popular mythology into the nation's history. A single copy of this text from the original print run of 75 copies was preserved in the Deifite National Library, allowing it to survive both CK class scenarios. It is believed that Bruce made contact with an unknown occultist for the printing of the Chronicles of the Devas. An extensive ritual was performed, and the printing began on June 20th, 1788, the summer solstice. Soon after, SCP-6000 began on September 22nd, 1788, the Optomal Equinox. This event formally removed Deifite predecessor states from reality, transforming the inaccurate ethnography into the only ethnography. Addendum 6003, Dr. Judd Lachelle's Testimony. The Overseer Council asked Dr. Judd Lachelle Pan, a devastating member of the Foundation, in the wake of SCP-6000, it was discovered that the Foundation had two facilities, Site 761 and Area 25 within Devastan. Personnel located there were only aware of a reality where Devastan had continually existed, but were fully loyal to the Foundation. To give a briefing on its national history in the immediate wake of SCP-6000. The following is a transcript of the briefing that he presented to the Council on March 21st, 2022. Hello everyone, 
Hope you are well. I recognize some of you, but the feeling is not mutual. You've asked me to give a briefing on my home country, which none of you knew existed. To make it worse, you were more familiar with a wildly inaccurate 18th century English Orientalist scandalous and highly embellished depiction of our country, which was in fact anomalous and removed our country from existence entirely. This version of our country, if it had ever existed, would have been the bloodiest and most anomalous civilization in the world. You called me here to describe what my Devastan is. I'm not going to do that. You'll find out what we're like later. No, today I'm going to argue that we deserve to live, because that's the real reason you called me here, to decide what to do in the wake of this CK class scenario. I don't even know where to begin with that. I think I'll start with myself while I'm here. In the time and world I remember, we were not expecting anything to happen on the Equinox. As such, we had reduced security in the Dempo exclusion in reality anchoring sites, and more personnel allowed outside them, or at normal levels, of course. I happened to be outside a site at a time, traveling between one. Then 6,000 hit, and now we don't agree about anything. So, if you have that as a problem, we clearly had more consensus reality on our side. It's everybody else in the world who isn't a skipper. Than you do. So, so we're here to stay, I think. You have to let us stay. It's your, our, whole ethos. And that means I need to give you a crash course into our history. My people, my nation, we are not anomalous. If the briefing you gave me is true, and I really have no idea because it was incredibly brief, then we have been on the wrong side of the joke for something along the line of 200 years. We're the victims here, and I'm worried that your knee-jerk reaction will be to play the joke again, because that's what you do. I've dealt with all of you before in my reality, the one I remember. I guess those versions of you are lost. But let's be honest, you haven't changed. None of you have changed in the entire time you've been alive. That's centuries for some of you, right? We're a peaceful country, if it wasn't for the actions of a single Orientalist and his book, a book I read as an academic curiosity, we wouldn't be sitting here today. You wouldn't know the difference between us and anywhere else in the world. Yes, we had a bloody past, and not without consequence. Yes, the Dayfight Empire had one of the highest rates of slavery in the world of any country ever. Perhaps it was only higher in Sparta, with the Helots. But you know what happened next? We ripped the Davis apart and burned their palaces to the ground. A single prince decided to eat an enslaved child when there are more slaves than free men. So his estate rose up and hanged him. And then because there are more slaves than Davis, that initial rebellion spread outward and toppled the entire empire. The true history of our nation is not one of eternal slavery, no. We were the first nation in the world to outlaw the practice, and we never let it return. But a single man saw that past, that single moment in which a prince ate a child, and he stretched it into eternity. He made the past of the country. That slavery was the backbone of our entire past and the present. The revolution wasn't salacious enough for him, so he took the moment in time that was, and he made it the only image of the country, the only one that could exist, but without the release of revolution. The poverty, but without consequence, and its spy was from there, becoming worse and worse, because we had no voice, nothing to say, stop, it wasn't like that. It was nothing but tragedy what he did. So, I come before you today, and I have to beg you, do not repeat what he did, do not do the same things, do not force us back into the dark, please.